Welcome back to our FPL video and podcast. This will be the updated wildcard team for game week eight. So I made a few modifications. You can check several team structures in the original wildcard podcast. So be sure to check that out as well as all this week's content, such as the updated transfer tips, the team selection and the deadline stream over the weekend. UCL Fantasy will also return with the team selection, limitless and wildcard squads as well. So be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. If you enjoy my content, our aim is to get this to the 200 likes and to keep on pushing towards 35 subscribers and beyond. Check all the links in the description below, like my Twitter and Instagram. Without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Anana is the highest scoring goalkeeper in FPL so far this season with 39 points. That's three more than the likes of David Ra, who's even more expensive. Now, Anana is a bit of an awkward price point because you'd probably rather just go for Raya or a cheaper goalkeeper in general, around 4.5 million. But Man United have a great set of fixtures coming up, and Anana has got the most clean sheets of any goalkeeper so far this season with four, and Man United only trail Liverpool in terms of clean sheets overall. You might want to go for Kelleher as a short-term pump for the next month or so, but Liverpool's fixtures aren't exactly great, and with United having better opponents on paper, including a few home ties against some favourable teams, I think Anana will get several clean sheets in this period, but when they come against the better teams, they could be battered on certain occasions and can see two or three goals as they have done against Liverpool and Tottenham Hotspur. So that's my only concern with buying an Anana. You can also cover United defensively with Diogo Dallo or Lissandro Martinez. It looks like Mazraoui is out for two months. Possibly he can return sooner than that. He would be my favourite way of covering Man United defensively. But with him out of the equation, I would go for Anana between the sticks. As for the backup goalkeeper, it's just going to be Fabianski at around 4 million. You don't really need to go for two expensive goalkeepers, but if you've got a bit of money available, you might want to go for Kelleher and rotate between your first choice, whether it's Anana, Sanchez or Sells, with that Kelleher option, and that could work very well for the next month, possibly even two, depending on when Alisson returns, and it looks like it will be after the next international break in November. But I think Anana and Fabianski should be enough. The two best premium defenders in the game right now are between Gabriel and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Now, in terms of attacking potential with the assists and bonus points, I think Trent would be the preference, but I think long-term Arsenal will get more clean sheets and Gabriel will score plenty of goals from now until gaming 38. He's already got two this season against Tottenham and Man City away, which he did back-to-back, -back, and he faces Bournemouth away up next. And I could see him being benched by a lot of people when he faces Liverpool, Chelsea and Newcastle over the next four game weeks and Gabriel could score a goal in one of those matches. He's that type of player you never really want to bench even at the Etihad or at Anfield. He has scored in those stadiums and the only one left in the top six is Old Trafford. Let's see if he can do that later this season but Gabriel for me is still a great way of covering that Arsenal defence. You might want to go for David Raya in goal and then go for Trent in this position. I wouldn't really mind that but it would require some downgrades elsewhere in the vast majority of cases because of budget Mine is roughly around 101.5 million, so I'll be able to afford this 15-man squad, as I'll show you later on, using FPL.team. But next up, I'm going for some cheaper options in this position at around 4.5 million, and one of them is Aina, who I highlighted in the Transtips podcast, but you could go for Milenkovic. It's very close between those two. Aina will get more bonus points, but Milenkovic will likely get more goal contributions this season, but ultimately, going for one of them is a great bet because Nottingham Forest have a solid defence. They're eighth in the Premier League table for expected goals conceded and they're also very solid in general especially in these big away games where they sit tight they go in a low block and they're very hard to break down against the likes of Chelsea and Liverpool where they got a victory earlier this season now the third option might not come from one of the best defenses in the Premier League in fact it's probably one of the worst but I think James Justin with the attacking potential at around 4.6 million and those upcoming fixtures can get you a few clean sheets and possibly a few attacking returns and bonus points in the process. He has been incredible in the last two game weeks, actually, providing an assist against Bournemouth in that 1-0 victory, as well as a clean sheet, of course, and two goals against Arsenal away from home. So I think James Justin is my favourite Leicester City option overall. But you've also got Okoli and Wout Fass, who are even cheaper if you're unable to afford this exact pick. But I'm also going for another 4.5 million defender here in 8 Nuri, who has Man City next. You bench him very easily this week. But afterwards, it's going to be quite tough to pick between these five defenders to start week in, week out. So you could argue there's a bit too much defensive depth here. Aitnery won't get many clean sheets, even with those upcoming fixtures, in my opinion. But he will get attack and returns. He bombs forward on that left-hand side. He's got a lot of attack and potential in terms of goal scoring and creativity. So that just leaves one defender spot left. And I'm going to go for another one who was at a similar price tag. 
but he has gone up in price several times in the last couple of weeks and that's Rico Lewis who I bought in on the gimmick 6 wildcard and he has started consistently in recent matches in the Champions League and Premier League but that might change you can't really back any Man City defender to start week in week out and there are going to be some bench points there are also going to be some headaches sometimes and he's not going to start every single match that you'd want him to and you just really want to hope that he starts in those plum fixtures like Southampton at home in game week 9 where an attack in return or a clean sheet is almost inevitable. So that's kind of the hope there of Rico Lewis. But if you do go for him, have that defensive depth necessary with your fourth or fifth option. In this case, it would be between Aina, Justin and Aitnuri to come in with a good fixture, have a bit of attacking potential or in the case of Aina, the clean sheet odds. And I think having this defensive depth could really work for you in the long term. I covered the latest injury update about Bakayo Saka in the Transtips podcast, the updated version. So Lee Carsley said the following just before England's match against Finland. Bakayo would have been close to playing versus Finland, but it would have been unfair to take a risk with him. He's a positive person and I expect him to be fine. So based on those comments, you'd expect Saka to be available in game week eight against Bournemouth away. And I remember this time last year when Arsenal visited the Vitality Stadium, there was a similar situation. Saka was yellow flagged and he scored the opening goal in a 4-0 victory for the Gunners. So I'm fairly confident Saka will play. Don't expect much to be revealed by Mikel Arteta in the press conference regarding all the yellow flag players like Martinelli, Kai Havertz, Jurian Timber and Bakayo Saka. But I expect the vast majority of them to be available in that game and to possibly start as well, especially in the case of Saka and Kai Havertz. So I definitely go for him still. I know Arsenal have some tough games coming up, so you could argue this is a nice time to get off Saka, but he could still tick along nicely in those tough away games against Chelsea and Newcastle and possibly get a goal and an assist against Liverpool. He's done it before in the past, although it'll be a very difficult game, I think, for both opponents. And I also think Bournemouth away is a decent fixture still, despite the fact they're a decent Premier League team, but Saka can still give a big return there, possibly a double-digit haul. And if you don't have Haaland, I think Saka is one of the best alternatives for the captaincy in Game Week 8. And next up is someone I'd normally attribute these same qualities to, but not with this specific fixture in mind against Liverpool away. And I'm referring to Cole Palmer, of course, who is captainable against Newcastle and Man United. But against the likes of Arsenal and Liverpool, I probably would stray away from that for the time being and wait for later in the season to maybe captain Palmer on a regular basis. He's a phenomenal player. Everything goes through him and he just creates so many chances from open play. He scores a lot of goals and the underlying stats are always ridiculous and he's going to be right up there for FPL points scored amongst all positions by the end of the season. It wouldn't surprise me if some of you argue that Hyun Son will be a better pick than either Saka or Palmer for the next 4-5 to five game weeks and I completely get that but I'd rather go for Spurs offensively with the likes of Solanke or someone like Madison or Brennan Johnson all of which I've covered in the last few episodes of the transfer tips. I think any single one of them would be great for the next 4-5 or five game weeks and possibly even beyond game week 12 where they face Man City away and they could get a goal or two in that fixture anyway. But Spurs have a good long-term run now until the end of the year. There are some tough games sprinkled in between, but generally speaking, they've got some very good opponents like Ipswich Town at home in a couple of weeks' time. And Brennan Johnson is an incredible form. He scored once again over the international break. That's goals in seven consecutive matches. Let's see if he can continue this consistency back to the Premier League after another international break. But it's a great response to all the abuse he was suffering early in the season after the North London derby. And this is a great response from him. Let's see if he can continue to score goals. But even if he blanks against West Ham at home in game week eight in the early kickoff, I'd still back him to do well in the following fixtures, particularly Ipswich Town, like I just mentioned. You could argue Solanke is the most consistent and probably the one you'd want to have in your team and set up for the long term. So you kind of just stick him in there and forget about it. Whilst Johnson is maybe more malleable and sellable with the alternatives in the midfield position. But I do like this sort of structure with Saka and Palmer and you're covering Spurs offensively with Brennan Johnson, who is still very cheap at 6.6 .6 million. Let's now go for other cheap midfielders. And one of them is McNeil, who is my favourite budget midfielder right now. Despite Semenya remaining a good option, he faces Arsenal, Aston Villa and Man City in the next three game weeks. Smith Rowe is definitely one to hold, in my opinion, as highlighted in the Transits podcast. And you've also got a few others like Morgan Rogers, who are still very decent. Tyler Dibbling at 4.6 million is interesting. And Buenanote is definitely someone to consider from Leicester City. But McNeil has great fixtures, a high ceiling with double-digit haul potential, and he's also got good underlying stats, playing in central areas now for Everton as the attacking midfielder. So I really like this pick, and I'd definitely go for him over Dominic Calvert-Lewin 
And finally, it's the best midfielder in terms of value right now when you combine fixtures, penalty status, underlying stats, and consistency. I think Mbumo is almost a must-have on the wild card. You could go about him with the likes of Jota or Diaz, perhaps even Jero Bowen, but Mbumo is my personal favourite and I think will do very well up until the end of the year. Another week and another occasion where Chris Wood features in a best wildcard team podcast. You have plenty of alternatives at a similar price like Jemmy Vardy, Danny Welbeck's been very consistent this season, and many more like the lap who I covered in the original wildcard podcast. But I think Chris Wood is the best forward at 6.2 million and below. He's well worth the money and whenever he gets a goal, he's very likely to get bonus points, either two or three, which is very helpful and crucial in FPL. So I really like Chris Wood as an option with his upcoming fixtures as well. They're very decent and he can score in tough away games like he proved against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge back in game week seven. I'm also going to go for Raul Jimenez who faces Aston Villa at home next. Not the best fixture and actually it's worth highlighting that Aston Villa are second in the Premier League for expected goals conceded. Only Liverpool are above them in that metric, but I think over the course of the season, Arsenal, Man City will overtake them. And Aston Villa never really give you that certainty of keeping clean sheets. They have kept a few recently against Man United and Bayern Munich, but against the so-called weaker opponents, they tend to concede a lot of chances and they also just never look like keeping a clean sheet, which is very frustrating for those that own Consa, who is also still an injury doubt right now, or Emi Martinez in goal. But Jimenez has been in excellent form. I still think he'll start over... Manis, who got a goal off the bench against Man City, but Jimenez's assist in the first half was incredible, and everything he touches right now turns to gold, and hopefully this continues for a long period of time, and Fulham at home are very strong. You could argue away from home they're a bit weak, and they're susceptible to some bad results, but in home matches, I think Fulham can beat most Premier League teams this season, and this is not just a season trend. This happened last year as well, where they beat the likes of Arsenal at Craven Cottage, so I think Jimenez could really help to deliver in those big games as well, and I do like him at 5.6 million. And the final forward is going to be none other than Erling Haaland. If you're wildcutting right now, my advice would be to go for him because you've got Wolves away and Southampton at home next, arguably the two worst defences in the Premier League up until this point of the season, and up until gimmick 12, there are some great fixtures for Man City, then it turns a little bit, and Tottenham at home isn't necessarily a bad fixture for Erling Haaland himself, he could score one or two goals in that game, possibly get even more goal contributions overall. But I'd definitely go from on the wild card right now. You could definitely argue in maybe a month's time or by the end of December, you'd go for a different sort of structure with Salah in the midfield alongside the likes of Saka and Palmer. Check out all the links in the description below, including Draft Town. For as low as £2 per week, you can gain access to all these tools like the player rankings, which is my personal favourite. And as you can see, several of the picks on the wildcard do feature in the top 10, namely Haaland, Saka, Palmer and Brennan Johnson. And if we actually look at the optimization tool, they will also recommend a starting 11 with Raul Jimenez and Aina making the cut. Chris Wood, Justin and Nuri drop down to the bench and Chris Wood has this kind of pattern of scoring, blanking, scoring, blanking. So if this continues, you're blanking game week eight and scoring game week nine. But I personally think patterns are there to be broken and he could definitely score against Crystal Palace at home. And for the captaincy, they've gone for Erling Haaland, which I completely agree with, and Saka as the vice. That's exactly how I'd set it up this week as well. But in the coming weeks, Cole Palmer is definitely a captaincy contender against Newcastle and Manchester United. The expected points is 65.9. The average expected minutes is 77 for this 15-man squad. And the average ownership is actually 19%. So it's not a template team by any means, especially with picks like Anana, who most people won't consider when wildcarding in Game Week 8. But I think that could really work out for you this week. So I definitely recommend trying out Draft Town. There is a link in the description below, like I mentioned. And I do refer to it a lot in my FPL videos and podcasts throughout the season. But let's now head over to fpo.team and visualize this squad in future game weeks. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below in terms of what you would do with these 50-50 calls. One of them would be Justin versus Aina for a starting spot and I'm currently going for James Justin away to Southampton and the other one would be Chris Wood versus Raul Jimenez and I've currently gone for Chris Wood. Those are the only two disagreements so to speak I have with Draft Town but they're very close calls and maybe they're going to end up being right because those players on the bench in Raul Jimenez and Aina could end up outscoring the likes of Lewis, Justin and Chris Wood in my starting 11. But I've got a Nana in goal, a back three of Justin, Lewis and Gabriel with a midfield five of Palmer, Mbumo, Johnson, Saka, 
and McNeil with Chris Wood and Erling Haaland up front. No debates about the captaincy for me. Haaland as the captain and Saka as the vice. And if we look ahead to game week nine, it's very similar, but I've gone for Palmer as the vice captain against Newcastle while Saka faces Liverpool at home. I've got Anana in there once again against West Ham, where I'm not too confident of a clean sheet, but I think beyond the next two game weeks, you know, I can start to keep some clean sheets with some very favourable games coming up. Ina, Lewis and Gabriel would form the defensive line, but you could go for James Justin over Ina if you wish. I've gone for Palmer, Mbumo, Johnson, Saka and McNeil in the midfield with Wood and Erling Haaland up front. And the bench has the likes of Jimenez, Justin and Aitnuri. It does make me slightly uncomfortable to bench Jimenez in his current form in back-to-back -back weeks, but you could go the opposite in either game week 8 or 9 by starting him over the likes of Chris Wood or one of these midfielders. Thank you very much for watching this video and listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for new. Our aim is to get this to the 200 likes and to keep on pushing towards very fast subscribers and beyond. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, DylanRCM, and check all the other links in the description below for my Patreon and the Championships for early access to my videos, amongst many other perks, the Discord server, FPL League, Draft Hound, as well as Spotify. Leave a five star review on my podcast. It would go a long way to support my channel. I wish you all the best of luck, the Gaming Kate, and the rest of the season. And I'll see you next time.